over the next couple of days, um, there's a whole lot of sessions on a lot of the powerful things that Atlas provides, whether it's multi-region, the ability to intelligently shard your data. All of these things can be really, really powerful, right? But they can introduce quite a few complexities. And if you aren't really confident with what you're doing, um, it can open you up to a few kind of little uh, trap holes, try say there. So here to walk us through a bit more of the security side when you know having sharded architecture on multi-region clusters, solutions architect from MongoDB, uh, John Mizak. John, welcome to the stage. All right, thanks, Dan. I want to start off today by asking a quick question. Who here has heard of a website called Shodan.io? In the audience, anybody? Okay, I see hand. Awesome. Uh, so for those who have not heard of it. Shodan is a search engine for devices like hosts and, and servers that are connected and available and reachable on the public internet. So it's out there, anyone can route to it, anyone can reach it. A simple search for MongoDB on Shodan as of last week turned up over 75,000 results that are out there on the public internet. I checked again this morning, I think it's closer to 70,000 now, it fluctuates a little bit every day or every week. So today, we're gonna to talk about making sure that your organization's cluster and your organization's environments don't end up adding to this statistic on Shodan. My name is John Mizak. I'm a senior solutions architect here at MongoDB. Before I was a solutions architect, I worked in application security and security engineering. So this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. This is going to be a quick talk that focuses on some common patterns for securely connecting your application to your MongoDB Atlas cluster. We're gonna start by going over some basic sharded terminology before we discuss the different connectivity options that are available to us. We'll take a look at what that means for a single region cluster, and then we'll go through a multi-region cluster as the complexity starts to grow. And we'll wrap things up finally by introducing some edge cases that don't quite fit in with the rest of the rules of this talk. We've only got so much time today, so there's a couple of things we're gonna leave on the cutting room floor. We're not gonna go through sharding basics, what is a shard, how to shard, shard key, and so forth. We're also not going to cover Google Cloud Platform or GCP or multi-cloud clusters. The reason for that is that GCP's private networking has some minor differences than AWS and Azure. We only have so much time. And lastly, we're not going to talk about data federation or online archive. Those can also be used in a secure manner, but we don't have the time to go into everything today. So let's start by looking at some basic sharded cluster terminology. Over here on the left-hand side, I have my clients. They could be application drivers. They could be Mongo Shell. On the right-hand side, I have a sharded cluster in MongoDB Atlas. My primary nodes for each shard are going to be green circles for this talk. My secondary nodes are going to be those transparent circles. Now, each of those nodes over there in my sharded cluster is running a MongoD process. It's actually what's responsible for being the database server. In a sharded cluster, we introduce an additional process called the Mongo S. That Mongo S acts as your query router. It sends your read and write operations to the appropriate shard where those that pieces of data are located. So your connections will flow from my client to the Mongo S and then all the way to the specific shards where the data lives. As you go to take a look at MongoDB Atlas, over here on the right, here's our uh, sharded cluster again. And for the rest of this talk, I'm gonna start using numbers to show where shards, what nodes are, are part of what shards and where they live, because once we start introducing additional regions, it's gonna get very complicated. So we have shards one, two, and three. Primary nodes are in green circles. But inside Atlas, we co-locate a Mongo S on each data bearing node where as part of a sharded cluster. So every single data bearing node also has a Mongo S. Uh, so we have a number of Mongo S's spread out throughout our Atlas environment. So there's a lot of Mongo S's to connect to, potentially. So now we know the connections that we have to make, let's talk about how we're gonna do those in a secure manner. So the first option we have available to us is peering. Peering is a bi-directional connection between two VPCs or VNets. And so resources in one of them, like the VPC on the left, can access resources on the other VPC as if they were in the same VPC or VNet together. Now, peering is bi-directional, which sometimes is what you want, sometimes it's not. But the other drawback of peering is that it not, does not allow for transitive connectivity. So every time I have a unique combination of VPCs or VNets, I need to add another peering connection. So adding another VPC here on the left means that not only do I have to add that connection between the one on the left and the one in the middle, I have to add another connection between the one on the left and one on the right. So as you can see, we start to grow our environment's complexity. We add more regions, we add more VPCs, 
this starts to become impractical after a while and very hard to manage. The other option available to us are private endpoints. So private endpoints are different from VPC peering or VNet peering in that they are a one-way connection. A private endpoint gets stood up in the subnet that your application lives in, and that application gets a connection string from MongoDB Atlas. The connection string resolves to the private endpoint, and then it uses that basically to send the connection over to MongoDB privately. Now, the nice thing about private endpoints is that they are transitive. So if I have another resource in the same, uh, in my application environment, it could be in a different VPC, different subnet, uh, as long as it has connectivity to that private endpoint, it can also use it transitively to go to MongoDB Atlas with the connection string. So this is the preferred approach and what we're gonna be using for a lot of our architectures today. So now that we looked at the different connectivity methods, let's talk about what we're trying to accomplish. The first thing we wanna do is make sure each shard in our shard cluster is highly available. We don't wanna let you know, an AZ going down or any server going down, a region becoming unavailable to prevent us from accessing part of our data set. So each shard needs to be highly available for what we wanna build. The other thing we wanna do is build an architecture that's gonna last. We don't wanna have to come back to the drawing, room board, draw, um, yeah, drawing board and go over exactly how we're gonna accommodate new shards because we have an increase in workload. We want this to be able to stand the test of time. And lastly, we never wanna route over the public internet because we don't want to introduce an attack surface for our database environment or our application environment, even in failover scenarios. Now, there are a couple limitations that we're gonna have to play, in, play with today, uh, and I've summarized these into two rules with private endpoints. The first rule is that our private endpoint is only gonna to connect to Atlas addressable targets in the same region that the private endpoint lives. So when we go to multi-region architectures, this is gonna be very important to keep in mind. And the second rule is that as we go through this today, we have to pick one of two options. We can either live in one region and we can have multiple endpoints in that region across different subnets and so forth, or we can spread out across multiple regions, but then we're limited to one private endpoint in each region. And that has major impact on what we actually wanna end up building. So let's take a look at what that means for a single region cluster. Over here on the left-hand side, I have my application. It's living in, I have instances of the application living in two different subnets. Over here on the right-hand side, I have my three shard MongoDB sharded cluster in Atlas. Now, I'm gonna stand up private endpoints in each of those subnets, and I can do this because I am only one region, so I can have multiple private endpoints in that region. Those private endpoints then will transfer that connection over to a load balancer on the MongoDB Atlas side, that's part of our private endpoint service. And that load balancer then will handle, has a bunch of listeners on it that will then handle distributing that to Mongo S. The Mongo S then, of course, doesn't have lines on this slide, but it acts as the router then to send it to the appropriate nodes over in MongoDB. So this is relatively straightforward so far, but it's gonna get more complicated as we look at multiple regions. So in a multi-region cluster, I have three regions, one, two, and three. And over here on the left-hand side, I have my applications again. Now, this is just one resource in each region, but I could also have other resources and other subnets and other VPCs also in that region. I just don't have room on the slide. On the right-hand side, I have my MongoDB Atlas cluster. Again, it's a sharded cluster with three shards. This time, the nodes in each shard are distributed across all my regions because we want those shards to be highly available. So my primary nodes are currently living in region one, and my secondaries are in region two and three. Here, I stand up a private endpoint in each region. This is the only private endpoint that can be created in each of those regions. So again, if I have other resources in other subnets or other VPCs in those regions, they need connectivity to that private endpoint to be able to use it to reach Atlas. Private endpoint then, again, has a partnership with that load balancer. The load balancer has listeners on it with different ports for different Mongo S's. Now, this seems to look straightforward so far, but there's one aspect we need to add here because we're multi, we are multi-region. And that is we need to introduce peering between our application VPCs or VNets on the left-hand side there. The reason for that is that if we go through a failover scenario where we lose region one, for example, my application can no longer use that private endpoint. Rule one in our limitations says that private endpoints can only allow us to reach those addressable targets in Atlas in the same region. So that private endpoint is no longer any good to us, really. The application would now need to use a peering connection to reach a private endpoint in another region, and use that then to reach nodes in MongoDB 
in other regions. So the primary could be to something like region two, and then we would be able to access our Mongo S's in those regions and then have that direct our traffic to various shards and nodes. Part of this, part of this can be done is why, um, part of the reason why this can be done is MongoDB gives us a global connection string when we set up private endpoints. It's a different connection string than our standard one, and that will help us to resolve two different interface endpoints. If one interface endpoint becomes unavailable, it resolves to the next one. Now, this is assuming that if I have other resources in these regions, they can use those private endpoints that are set up in each region. But what happens if I have environments in the same region that I need to keep separate, and I don't want to allow transitive connectivity between them just to give them access to the same private endpoint? But I also want to keep it multiple regions. So that introduces our edge case. And th this is something called multiple regionalized endpoints for sharded clusters. So in this example, over here, I'm going to have on my right-hand side, I have my MongoDB sharded cluster again across multiple regions. On the left-hand side, I have an app, two apps, actually, Team A's app and Team B's app. And these environments do not share connectivity. So they could be different applications or environments as a result of an acquisition or a merger. They could be a test environment for one app and a production environment for another, and I don't want to commingle that connectivity. But the idea here is I want both to be able to access my MongoDB Atlas cluster privately through a private endpoint. I also have another region there. And so I'm at a conflict with my rules here. How do I access this across multiple regions, but with multiple endpoints in one region? So we turn on this regional, regionalized endpoints feature. And what this does is it allows us to create multiple endpoints in multiple regions, but it turns the connection string into a region-specific connection string. The connection string now will only give us access to the Mongo S addressable targets in the same region. And so my team A app and my team B app will use that region one connection string there to be able to reach MongoDB Atlas. In region two, team A's app will have to use its own region two connection string. In a failover scenario, if I lose region one, right now, team A's app, even though it is peer to its own environment in region two, is not going to fail over automatically because it still has that region one connection string in it. I would have to go back in and manually add the region two connection string to, to the team A's app in region one's VPCA, so it then would be able to use the private endpoint in region two and be able to hit the Mongo asset targets in that region. So as you can see, this has some of its own drawbacks. It's not a universal fix. It's really for environments that need to be segmented, but you need to have unique segmented private endpoints as well. So to summarize, I know this was a quick talk. Private endpoint is the preferred approach that we want to, to deal with. For single region, it's pretty straightforward. We can have multiple endpoints across different subnets. For multiple regions, we can only have one endpoint per region, and we need to add peering on the application side so that we can fail over gracefully between using endpoints in different regions. And then the last bit we talked about was the edge case for regionalized endpoints. Um, this can be useful for very segmented environments, but it has its own drawbacks. It's not a universal solution you want to turn on for every sharded cluster. Hopefully, you learned a little something today and we can start to make sure that this number doesn't grow any higher and actually over time gets much closer to being something like zero. So thank you very much and uh, open the floor for any questions anyone might have. All right, if we have any questions, just uh, raise your hand and I'll bring this over. When you do have a failover issue, a situation, do you have performance issues if all of a sudden, especially in the second example you gave where you had two regions going into one and now they have to use the other? Is it, was it this one yes. specifically? Um, there, was, there shouldn't be a performance issue uh, if, so I guess it depends on the different regions that you're gonna involve, right? So if you are now, if you have something like a US East one, and then your second region is you know, halfway around the world, and now all of a sudden you have to basically go to that region to access your MongoDB cluster, but your application's still living in US East one, then there might be some additional latency from the round trip time. But for actual specific like MongoDB related performance, the failover, it's the same, it should be the same inside Atlas, the same hardware for each of the nodes in the clusters. And so by the time it gets there, it's, it's got your copy of the data, it's running the same types of hardware, it has the same types of indexes, and then it should be okay to keep going. 
And if you do have regulatory concerns, so you cannot use region two, is that an issue? Or would you then replicate and have in region one two to a second set of clusters? Regulatory concerns for region like, two. Let's say if you can't use like data. Oh, well, I'm saying. Um, residency. Oh, got it. Um, so in this case, you're basically running only in region one. Region two is in an area where you can't fail over to. Is there a possibility of introducing an additional region there where you can fail over to, like another one inside, um, you know, Europe or, you know, wherever it might be? Or got it. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, what about multi-cloud environments? Yeah, so um, if it's out of scope for this talk, just because, okay, okay. so there's a little bit more complexity that comes into play there. Uh, yeah. And the reason for that is that the connection string gets built a little bit differently across different cloud providers and their right. implementations. And also GCP's private service connect is, handles things a little bit differently than AWS and Azure do with their private endpoints. Um, even the way okay. we set up a private service connect um, thing in Atlas, uh, instead of using a load balancer with a bunch of port listeners and everything that map to the addressable targets, it actually spins up, I believe, a lot more IP addresses than, than we would with AWS or Azure. So um, that could probably be its own lightning talk, is, is multi-cloud, taking this to multi-cloud, but it, unfortunately, right. it's just out of scope for this one. Okay, yeah. awesome, thank you. But, yeah. but we could catch up afterwards. I could probably right. point you to something, yeah. All right, I think that's all we have time for, unfortunately, but um, appreciate John, and feel free to grab him uh, mm -hmm. off stage. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.